top four is done out here, fam. It's dusted. Top four is gone, fam. I know what you're talking about, top four, fam. You know, United got Southampton Monday night. Leicester have got Sheffield and they've got nice fixtures coming up, fam. We're dropping out of the top four for the first time since October and you want me to remain optimistic, fam. You are delusional, yeah? Especially after that performance and the way the Lampard set out his team tactically, the player performances. How do you think that fills me with confidence going into the rest of the last three Premier League games for us to secure top four? How do you think Ziyech or Werner watching that game tonight thinking, hmm, glad I joined Chelsea or thinking Havertz or Alaba looking at, get, looking at their game thinking, why the hell would I join this team? Why? Tactically clueless. A liability all across the pitch. Naive defensively. The whole thing was a shambles. You want me to remain optimistic? Fuck off. Honestly, fam, I don't have time for games this video. I'll be honest, I don't have time because time for any games. Like if you if you want something, you know, for someone to sugarcoat this performance, then click off this video right now. Click off, fam, because I am gonna keep it short, simple, and on the complete hundred percent honest and real in this video because I have had enough, man. I understand it's a transition season, but there's boundaries and there's lines. And obviously before I do get into it, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, all that stuff. But you know, losing to three nil losing three nil to Sheffield United away from home. Is simply not good enough. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't care about fatigue. I don't want to hear no excuses. Yeah, we changed formations three times this game, and I have still have some people on the timeline on Twitter blaming specific players, saying, "Oh, oh, look, Jorginho, Jorginho, this." Shut up, man. Just shut up at this point, yeah. Because how can you not blame Lampard for this loss? Three formation changes in one game, and Chris Wilder, by the way, who came up from League One, has still got you tactically in his pocket. Tactically in his pocket, diabolical. Tammy Abraham, yeah, did not have a shot on target since the 33rd minute. Since the 33rd minute, Sheffield had four shots that game and they scored three goals. Four shots and three goals. Three goals. And you think this is acceptable by any means? You think this is acceptable at all? I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. I'm speechless. I'm genuinely am. Because of course I knew this would be a tough game away at Sheffield. It's going to be difficult. But to lose in that fashion, in that manner, come on. Come on, man. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's utterly embarrassing. It's disgraceful. And, you know, the vibe that I got off the players was, you know, I'm just here to collect my weekly wage and I'm going to be pissing off in a second anyway. You know, William, your purple patch is finished, so you can leave now again this season. You know, I don't want you staying here next season. And it's not even me being reactionary, yeah? Scoring a few penalties in the last few games is not going to earn you a three-year contract. It's not. Just go to Tottenham, go down the road to Arsenal. At this point, I've had enough, man. I've had enough. We started off with a four at the back, which is the wrong thing to do. Yeah. And then he switches to a three at the back, to a three, four, three. And then he switches to three, four, one, two. Tactically clueless. Clueless. There was no game plan because as far as I'm concerned, there was no game plan. I knew the game was done dust at the half time because of how Sheffield tactically set up. We were never getting back into that game. We would never even look like close to even scoring. Sheffield deserved all those three points. I'm not disputing that. But we never even looked close to even scoring one goal. Let alone let alone drawing the game or scoring two or three. Forget that for a second. Yeah. Sheffield had a game plan. They were tactically disciplined. They were defensively solid, immaculate going forward, deceptive. They were spot on this game. Wilder had his tactics spot on. You have another manager on our team, Lampard. Yeah, I'm not talking about him as a. I don't want to talk about him this season. Just this game exclusively. Clueless, naive, shell shocked, just baffled. He looked like he, he ran out of ideas. My man was clueless. He had nothing going for him. His substitutions were completely off. And the performance was dreadful. I don't even want to get in the top four in a second. I'll get onto that later on in, in this review. But the actual performance, <laughs> I'm genuinely in shock. You know, my man, yeah, Lampard, thinks he is Pep Guardiola or fucking Maurizio Sarri starting Jorginho at Register. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Jorginho starting. I want Jorginho to play. But you do not stick Jorginho in a long DM position, at a number six position, and have Ross Barkley mace him out in the same fucking team as an attacking eight. You either stick Jorginho in his normal natural position in a 4-3-3 with a right centre midfielder closer to him like a Kovacic or a Kante. Yeah, you either do that or you don't play him at all. Because you cannot leave Jorginho isolated like that with no one close to him, with a sh physical, fast-paced, direct team like Sheffield. Because not only is our midfield going to get completely overrun, but there's not going to be any defensive solid solidity in that team whatsoever. In that team whatsoever, and, and you know what, yeah, I'm not even going to blame Kepa for any of the goals, because the first one was a deflection, yeah. Zuma Christian, you don't know what they were playing at, yeah, not even reacting to any of that. Not even reacting. Snails. 
Yeah, Rhys James, defensively shot. I don't know what's happened to him since lockdown. Post lockdown, my man's been shot of confidence. Yeah, he switches to a back three. We see some some energy, some urgency. Cool. Yeah. Are you a glorified Unai Emery? You know, why have you got to try and rectify things at half-time? Why aren't you getting your game plan spot on from kickoff? Why? Where's the urgency? And that's the thing as well. Shifting the blame from Lampard to the actual players is a team performance. The team was dreadful. I'm not saying the team played well. You know, the team was dreadful. They lacked ideas, lethargic passing, but there was no urgency. It did not look like a team that was competing for top four, that had top four on the line. We could fall out of the top four for the first time since October. We've been in the top four for 10 fucking months and we're going to fall out of it. It's such a Chelsea thing to do, yeah? Tammy Abraham, another poor performance. Dreadful. This was the perfect game for Olivier Giroud. Physical, great link-up play. What happens? He sticks on Tammy until, what, the 70? Pretty much the whole game. Tammy makes about 12 touches all game. All fucking game. All game. Misses sitters. Dreadful link-up play. He's been terrible for, a, for time now. For time. And you're starting Ross Barkley, thinking he has some juice shooting from long range. My man's washed. He's dusted that in the, in the streets. Don't know why he's even starting. Should have been Kovacic. Where was Kovacic to be seen? Nowhere. You bring on Rudiger. Why? You bring on Rudiger at half time. For what? For what? He's aerially dreadful. He never wins any of his aerial duels. And he cost us the third goal. He cost us the third goal. I just... Uh, honestly, everything was baffling. I know it was a bad day at the office, but... This was schoolboy stuff. You know, you take off you take off three chains of Hudson and Doyle, but they have perfect chemistry. Why would you do that? That makes no sense. There is no logic to any of that. You know, that baffling. You bring on Alonso, fine, you only got three at the back. You bring on Runic for Christensen. Why? That makes no sense. <laughs> Why? And he costs us the third goal. Everybody dreadful. My man does not even know what the offside trap is. You don't bring on Kovacic until late. You keep on Barkley for that long. You wait until we lose 3-0 and then you take off Barkley. No reason to be proactive. You are completely reactionary. Why was Barkley on that pitch for so long? Why? Why was Tammy? And do you know what was even more baffling? You bring on Giroud, cool, after, for God knows, after the 65th minute. Instead of bringing Giroud on for Tammy... You take off our most potent, our most threatening player in Pulisic. You take off our best player since lockdown, Pulisic, who's got who's got any spark or any hope of getting back into this game. You take off Pulisic and you bring on Giroud for Pulisic. You got two up top. Mike, you are clueless. You've changed three formations in one game. Three formations in one game. One game. You take off Pulisic. For what? He's our most threatening player, the one that's going to make something happen. You take him off and you stick Tammy, who is dreadful the whole fucking game. Explain that one to me, please. No defensive structure, no robust defending, no compact defending, leaking goals left, right and centre. Centre-backs are clueless. You know, defensively getting overrun completely, physicality not there. Set Don't get me started on set pieces and zonal marking because, you know, I've mentioned that too much, too much now. I've, I'm so tired and bored of mentioning the same fucking thing every game. Zonal marking. You know, we haven't got the height. Okay, cool. But are we working on any training? I'm seeing training pictures, Lampard taking corners and whatnot. Fam, work on set pieces. Where is the defensive coaches? We've leaked nearly 50 goals this Premier League season. 50 goals. Yeah? You can't coach a defence. You can't. Don't tell me you can. This is why you're trying to sign... You know, an upgrade on Kepper and an upgrade on centre back because you can't coach the defence. You're telling me the Sheffield United's back four, the defence. You're telling me, yeah, that they're better than our current back four. They're not. We have they our back four are technically much better, gifted, better on the ball, better at tackling. But why is Sheffield United better at defending? Because they have tactics, they have defensive organisation, they have defensive coaches who know what they're doing. They know how to coach the defence. We have we have a manager and a coach, yeah. That hasn't got a clue how to coach a defence. No defensive structure. There's no organisation at defence. It's pass it to Pulisic and inshallah. That's it at this point. Give it to Reese James. Let him whip in across. Inshallah. That's it. Giroud and Pulisic link up play. Hopefully Kante can you know run around like a headless chicken in the midfield. Hope Mason Mount scores with Bangor. Please tell me in that first half. What was the game plan? Because I'm interested to hear what Lampard thinks. What was the game plan? I, I did not see a game plan at all. Passing 77% possession in the first half. Cool. But how many shots did we have? 
Our XG was 0.11, you know. Our XG was 0.11. Moving the ball sideways on the halfway line. Yeah, cool. Well done. 77% possession. This is, that's going to do anything. That's going to threaten Sheffield. You can see Sheffield. They're relaxed. They did not even have to go into second gear this game. It tells you everything you fucking need to know. Man, I'm done out here. I'm, I'm pissed off. You know, top four is dusted. This, as far as I'm concerned, top four is dusted. We still have got, we've still got to go Anfield when they've got a fucking trophy presentation. But we're dusted in the streets. We're generally dusted. But wrap up the review, smash like, pass the subscribe, hit the bell notification, comment down with your thoughts. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gone.